Great, great, great. Welcome everyone. Today we have with us Ishmoid Arora sir of SYC. And he needs no introduction. Everybody knows him. Uh, welcome on the show, sir. Hi, Jay. How are you? Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. Sir. Thanks for doing this podcast. No worries, no worries. It's it's a it's it's a pleasure to come to a platform where such a young personality is actually trying to build something. Because at your age, I was playing football <laughs> all all the times, <laughs> right? Great, great, great. So my first question to you is, sir, how are you? How did you start getting interest in stock markets? Like, what was the point where you started knowing about stock market, and when you started started investing in in it? So uh, initially, I think um, so. I actually got introduced to stock market when I had no real knowledge. This happened way back in sixth, seventh class. So I think back then it was two thousand eight or two thousand nine uh, period of boom and bust. Got it. And uh, like I used to actually come back home around two uh, forty five from the school, and because my mom got involved in stock markets and even my dad got involved in stock markets, so they used to keep checking the ticker because uh, all of them were taking advice from the broker. So, uh, because uh, I think उस time पे वो लोग देखते नहीं थे मतलब phone पे prices क्या चल रहे हैं but because they were watching the prices on the ticker so I used to so suppose if she was making lunch for me so I used to write down the prices of the of, of basically the stock on a piece of a paper that अभी I T C का price ये चल रहा है और basically some और किसी और stock का price ये चल रहा है that was my basic introduction with stock markets uh, then eventually like I passed out around twenty Thirteen, twenty, fourteen, के आसपास. I think I, I around about that I passed out. And uh, what were you doing at that time uh, in graduation? Like uh, you are asking what eleven, twelfth, or you are uh, like no after that after. Ah, uh, right. So during the time of college, basically, right. So actually, in eleven, mm-hmm. twelfth, so I'll just take you to through the journey from eleven, twelfth only. Sure, so sure. I was very, very interested in economics, right? Okay. And I was also very, very interested in political science. Got it. so these were two subjects which really fascinated me and uh, the optional subject that i took was physical education all of my friends were thinking kya pe le rahe <laughs> physical education le rahe but i had super fun during those two years because i used to play football every day that that was the schedule and uh, during that time so in 11 12 uh, like i like i was always a good student uh, literally aced all the exams and uh, post 12th uh, so economics was my re- real fascination but i never took a course in accounting or something in 11th or 12th because i uh, like ended up choosing arts and uh, economics i was very fascinated with microeconomics since the beginning that okay. what leads to competition within industries how to do industry research how to get an idea about the national income i think uh, you're in 12th right now right uh, no i'm in 9th oh you're in 9th you're too, too young right now so i think even in 11th or 12th you will see that how uh, basically e- economics is a subject that really fascinated me and how country works how uh, how, how is the entire na- national income calculated all these concepts were very very fascinating then uh, during the time of college i did under graduation in political science honors actually got it right right so um, so during that time i think this was uh, i like during the end of 12th class i got introduced to warren buffett so okay after that yeah after that a friend of mine actually did a course in value investing in delhi so he introduced me to one buffet and uh, that was when things really changed so, so that from was that day. point you started investing or you were investing in that 6 7 uh, standard only no no i ne- i didn't invest in 6 7 standard that was when i actually got the, the idea industry. of stock markets right matlab i never knew there is something like stock markets back then got it right got it got it, got it. And then when was S O I C born at that time? What was the inspiration after that? So you see, got introduced to Warren Buffett. Yeah, the journey is a little, uh, I think, different. So I think uh, during twenty fifteen, twenty fifteen, I read all, all like I read a lot of books. I think I like just in that two three year period, I must have gone through one hundred and ten to one hundred and five books just on investing. and i actually did a lot of courses as well just to understand that uh, what is fundamental investing what is technical analysis and stuff and uh, like because during the time of college should to be told because i used to go to du uh, there was no such thing as strictness about attendance or something so in the morning i used to play football for the college team and during the day i used to study investing or basically chill with friends uh, because attendance was tiny like you used to go to the college 
and lecturer wasn't there so i, I was actually a bit disappointed initially then i started enjoying life over there as well so uh, that that gave me a lot that gave me a lot of time initially and uh, i also got introduced to twitter i had i think i like before these two profiles i had two three profiles more but uh, like all of those profiles had different names and uh, from there i uh, saw some posts by people on investing and stuff and i interacted with a few people on value picker as well value picker was a very good forum i think uh, i think still to like till today any good company which has done well in the last decade or so i've read the entire thread the thick and through from, from the beginning whether it's deepak knight right whether it's apl apollo whether it's a thread of balkrishna industries whether my yuri unicorters atul lotto any company that you name which has done well i've read the thread since the beginning and that actually tells you that how fascinating the entire subject is because you get companies so for some people in, investing is a journey of basically creating wealth or basically creating multi bagels or stuff but i think for me it was more of a it's more of a journey of actually an intellectual curiosity that why did people go right and and where did people go wrong and actually some of the times you'll see that if you look at the thread of balkrishna industries a lot of distinguished investors uh, called the company really expensive in 2013 2014 and even mm-hmm. since then the company has been almost a 7 8 bagger right so that just shows you that there is no authority in investing right because future events unfold and at the end even an investor who's uh, who has a very good authority and who's distinguished at the end of the day even he is a human who's dealing with probabilities right so there yeah, are no mistakes right uh, not mistakes i think everyone can ha- have successes and failures too and mm-hmm. this is a sport yeah. where are th- they where there are no classes right because if you go to different professions you find there are different hierarchies over here i will say uh, really the investing hierarchy really lies in the amount of hard work you are willing to put in so i typically say that there are three stacks of investors so first stack of investors are those people who have read thoda sa screener chalana aate who can read one or two con calls um, like who, who can read basically one or two credit ratings and that's it the that's the first stack then there is second stack of investors second stack of stack of investors are those uh, who have read annual reports of companies within the same industry who have read annual reports of companies within uh, like con calls of uh, of uh, like uh, of the entire industry and who have a little knowledge of how the industry is shaping up then there is finally the third stack of investor where ideally you get to th- over a period of time that is you have a very solid network right you have a very solid network you you have a very solid network for scuttle but and you understand broadly what is what, what works in different industries and that okay. is the final and the third stack of investing that is where you will find a lot of these uh, a lot of these distinguished investors are like in the third stack find the final bucket types got it got it got it sir and after that uh, after your graduation then what happened in your journey in your stock market journey right so uh, this was close to i think uh, 20 30. Yeah, so yeah so 2013 uh, 14 14 i entered college and i and i graduated around 2017 so during our time thankfully uh, because uh, earlier it used to be a four year course but during our time it, it was reduced to a three year course right so so in 2017 i think if i'm not mistaken i got uh, introduced to perfect research right okay so i so basically perfect research so it's a family office so it's a family office based out of green park and uh, they espouse principles of value investing right and i, I think uh, you might have heard the name of mr ashish kela so yes yes absolutely he used to be a, he used to be the student of uh, professor sanjay bakshi right and he was managing his own family office so he has a team of research analysts so basically I, so basically i started working for him and uh, at that point of time i also along with that so basically i also started doing my uh, distance learning from narsi munji in, in financial management and uh, so for two years almost i i like worked for him and he really honed our skills of research right and at uh, we 2015 se to ab ye bhi mat puchna they made a lot of mistakes as well like in during 2015 16 17 even during 18 made a lot of mistakes had some winners maybe by fluke but uh, 2017 18 got very very interest uh, like what very very serious with the thing and i started documenting the entire process the entire case studies 
this is why you will see in our videos that there are multiple case studies from different industries because i've uh, almost i've documented each and every company that i've basically jo bhi companies padh rakhe unka kai na kai i've i've created these notes and documents so that gives you a very good idea what what were you learning from that uh, experience working at ashish shila sir as a so, research team uh, one of the key learning was that research is hard if you want to do it seriously so uh, i think ashish sir presented both dcb bank and info edge at one of the uh, investing conclaves for info edge we, we made a presentation of 300 slides <laughs> and then, oh my god uh, that was fantastic research from there on birds you were in uh, you got introduced to in depth research right that you do in your videos no no just, just before the presentation suppose the presentation was on sunday so we sat down with sir on friday or saturday morning and we were like sir 50 minute presentation ke who, who will watch a 300 says slide presentation <laughs> so we sat down for 4 5 hours we trimmed it down to 65 60 but that entire process was very very enlightening because we had to read uh, the entire info edge uh, for con calls basically 10, 10 years back all, almost 8 9 years ka pada then we read all, all the all the annual reports as well then we didn't stop over there we also read uh, the international peers like international peer in international peer uh, international peers in recruiting space we basically we read about them then we also read about uh, food delivery companies abroad as well so just to get an idea that w- what can ha- potentially happen with zomato then finally we did a sotp valuation like some of the parts valuation for infoedge so that was also a very very enlightening experience to do the entire thing uh, to like To, to to piece together the entire thing in one presentation similarly we did it for for this bank as well so there's a bank by the name of uh, by the name of dcb bank and over there as well we piece the entire industry narrative together that uh, like different types of banks in the industry what is the return on equity for different banks what is the loan growth so that gives you a very very wide perspective right so that that was when the real fascination for research even picked up more from there i think i studied a lot of companies over there more than 45 50 companies within 2 years uh, mota mota i think i would have studied fantastic fantastic sir and then after that uh, after that working with ashish kila sir there after that you started syc and what was the motivation starting it? see uh, to, to be told i didn't start syc uh, at that time so this was some okay. close to 2019 ke end ke aas paas hoga mota mota i think okay. 2019 middle or 2019 end so uh, like i was managing my family money uh, like I, i actually started uh, i actually started managing my family money somewhere in 2018 itself and by 2019 end i just thought ki uh, i actually saw a lot of youtube channels as well to, to, to be told and uh, i was like ki the type of content they are delivering i thought we can do better to to be told i i thought we we can do better and i so i and i uh, started a channel in 2019 end but there was just no traction okay like, there was just no traction i i just started the channel by the name of ishmoy tarora right there was no traction and uh, so i had to close that ch- channel down once then soic is actually the second venture we started during the time of lockdown and even during that time i was like we have lockdown ho rakha hai so we only have t- time hi time hai so first <laughs> first first ever video we made was on a company by the name of suven pharma and us company ka usi time pe de merger hua tha so you were getting that stock at a pe multiple of 12 times doing a return a return on capital employed of almost 35 40% types so i thought ki if i have to go wrong to how how much more wrong can i go by like buying a stock at 12 pe 40% roc right right and during that time i think first of the like one of the first webinars that we did was on 23rd of march that is when the market absolutely crashed and uh, during that time so uh, we discussed close to 20 to 25 businesses so uh, i had uh, like so i always had a small investing group of a lot of uh, learners and there were 25 to 30 people over there and we just simply charged like uh, 1000 or uh, 1100 rupees per webinar and uh, almost 25 to 30 people joined uh, that one and we released a entire seven are recorded uh, basically seven are recorded session some people try to uh, like try to uh, attend it live but after two hours it was very very difficult to speak so pura webinar record kara and that was a six seven hour session in which i discussed stocks like just to give you an example balaji mines at a p multiple of four five times yet i couldn't buy 
राइट इट वॉज एट स्टॉक प्राइस ऑफ ऑलमोस्ट टू हंड्रेड टू ट्वेंटी रुपीज आई थॉट की इट्स इट्स एन इंडस्ट्री स्ट्रक्चर दैट इज अ डुअपली and there are only two players who are, who are competing with each other actually i used to be invested in alkyl mines so balaji mines i was very very skeptical because of the hotel allocation and the C- and, and and the cfl allocation but i still uh, thought that the value is too much but since i was invested in alkyl so i couldn't ever buy so i couldn't basically ever buy balaji mines but uh, that was a very very fascinating experience to interact with a lot of donors so that was when the soic journey started great 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 sir now coming to the uh, investment type questions the first question in investment philosophy is what's the whole process uh, of you researching the stock from getting the idea till the till the moment of buying the stock like what's the whole journey what all the things you read value picker thread screener page etc etc annual reports on call what's the whole process like so just before i give this answer so i will actually like to tell you a little more uh, story in between that sure sure <laughs> I, sure, sure actually when we started soic I was doing the recording. I was I was doing complete. I mean, जो भी video का editing है, I I was doing it. I was also sort of making the infographics initially, and uh, that used to take almost thirteen to fourteen hours per day, right? And after my, one month, I was like, I can't do this. Okay. I'm tired, right? So this also initially happened with the first channel. I actually got tired. Then I realized you cannot uh, do things uh, without people being to- together with you. So, t- so two of my friends, they were also very very interested in investing. So, uh, so that is when actually both of them also joined me. And one wa- and one of the guys is actually out of them. He particularly makes all the graphics. So you might have seen our uh, infographics team, right? Can so I sit down, not yours. Right, right. So infographics are made that way because he himself is an investor, so he understands what what an investor wants to see. And uh, secondly, uh, another friend of mine by the name of Salta Garg, he he also joined us, and he is looking after the entire IT infrastructure because that is a whole different ball game. So you need people Correct. to be with you. It's otherwise it's very difficult to do uh, like everything alone. Okay, okay. I think many people face the same problem that you can't do everything yourself. It burns you up after after a certain period of time, and you need to uh, have or build a team for that for that same problem. I think w- within one month I was burnt out. I was like, I can't do this <laughs> because uh, day and night I'm basically video editing. Karo video editing is one of the toughest tasks which I personally found uh, right. And uh, like shooting, recording, making the infographics, recording the video, it was just a fourteen hour uh, work day. Right. No, no, and, and plus that you also do the stock research by yourself, write down right, the notes right. and shoot it, etc., etc. Like four, five hours of research, seven, eight hours of video editing, making the infographics. It was just. Okay. I, I still think that how was I able to do it, but uh, some somehow we could do it. <laughs> right. No, no, I think that that was the time of lockdown also, right? We had so much of time. I think that made you do that, and after that, yeah. you realized that you are need to build a team. right actually those things are they after see in initially in 2 3 days the type of intensity you have intensity can take you over the hill in the short term but problem with intensity is that other areas of your life start suffering your health start suffering because you cannot go to the gym or you cannot work out i think lockdown does but you can work out or something so uh, those things actually matter a lot to me as well because i want a good night sleep and i actually want to uh, look after my health so those so those things were suffering so this is why i think it's always better to have a team whenever you're doing such such a like uh, such, such, such a thing okay 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 uh, coming back to my question so uh, what's your in- whole investment process uh, like from from first getting the idea of uh, a particular company and then till the till the point of buying it right i think uh, jay so it again comes back to the question of having different stacks of investors right so mm-hmm. uh, see at the end investing is nothing but just being prepared just by reading different ideas so i'll just give you an example like uh, 2015 2016 say i've been reading at least two three credit ratings a day right and okay. then you start building small dictionary of companies in your head so mm-hmm. so so that is one way that over a period of time you have the dictionary of companies in your head and if you keep reading uh, the threads of value picker uh, along with that Uh, so what ends up happening is that thoda thoda pata hai is business bare mein if someone talks about vip industries today or safari today so i know a bit about that industry i know a bit about what those companies do right and there so so this is one way 
of basically generating ideas that suppose you're suppose you're coming across a credit rating and you suddenly see that the company has massive plans for capex and stuff because at the end your objective of screening stocks is only one thing that you're looking for strong earnings growth right and there are multiple sources for an earnings growth one of the strongest sources a company is doing capacity expansion one of the like say, say second strongest sources suppose if you're looking at an fmcg business that company is going to expand distribution something like what uh, tata consumer did third uh, key source is geographical expansion a lot of it companies do similarly a lot of fmcg companies do fourth key source is again this is basically specific to the industry itself suppose if a company is opening up more and more stores suppose if we talk about the retail industry or suppose if we talk about the qsr industry so these are some of the four or five sources for a fifth source which I, which i think is a very under under appreciated uh, under appreciated one is that the company has already completed capex but for some reason all the other they are not able to fully utilize the capacity and they are already sitting on a massive bomb of operating leverage and once the capacity utilization picks up the operating leverage kicks in and you get basically disproportionate uh, returns so there are six seven sources uh, ideally which one should look for so these are some of the things that you condition yourself with ki uh, uh, just to give you an example now uh, suppose if you focus yourself suppose if you're in ninth class today or suppose if you enter 11th so you you'll have a uh, you'll you'll have a choice whether you want to take arts whether you want to take commerce without maths or you want to you want to take commerce with maths or you want to take P pcm i think pcm bb i think that is also an option so what you're trying to do is that you're trying to uh, you're trying to frame yourself for that particular basically particular line of subjects correct similarly over here if your objective is to find earnings growth strong earnings growth with competitive advantages along with this these six seven triggers then that ends up becoming your frame of mind and your focus for finding the companies right so then that ends up becoming a checklist type of mental model acha is company mein abhi aisa hai is company mein aisa hai so then that is how the that so that so that is basically one way to find companies is to frame your mind to look for such things and to basically keep keep reading across a lot of stuff second way to find in companies is to network with a lot of smart investors this one is very underappreciated but as you will observe if you are still into investing for 5 7 10 years down the line you will see that your network gives you a lot of ideas and uh, sometimes if you respect the investor well enough uh, the uh, and uh, if he has already uh, like had like if you if he already has a good track record so then your network helps you a lot in generating ideas so uh, like network is the second one and uh, third key tool that you can use to generate ideas is uh, basically using something like a tejori finance or screener where you can create basically different filters for ideas but i still think out of these three the second one is the most potent for, at least for me right now like i i've basically personally used the first and the third one as well so say so second one is a very very potent tool because if because at the end investing is nothing but a game of observation right and in the game of observation only those people pay uh, only those people win who can pay full attention and at the end of the day what is the fundamental problem that we cannot pay attention to all the things at all the times so suppose if i have a smart friend and he already has a solid track record and uh, he has paid attention uh, he has paid attention to some solid ideas he has observed some solid ideas right i can just take that idea from him i can just borrow his research then i start building my own basically my own philosophy or I, I basically i start applying my own own particular philosophy to that idea whether it meets whether it meets my own uh, framework or not if it if it doesn't meet my framework then i'll simply discard the idea right if it meets my framework then i'll just go all in and then i'll just start basically doing a deep dive into the idea so that is what i particularly do there there so the ideas that you generate from your network are basically the starting point for your research and after that you develop layers of research around it and at the end if it satisfies it satisfy your research uh, checklist basically you uh, look into it more and if it doesn't you just discard the idea right so that is one of the ways and even first and third way works a lot because first way mein kya hota hai suppose if you end up spending a lot of time over here is that you can create sub segmentations of the industry right and uh, you can get an idea suppose if there is a high margin piece within the industry and there is a company which is uh, currently making low margins but it is moving into a business which has high margins so you can easily draw inferences ki theek hai ye company uh, it is trying to change the product mix which is one of the triggers for earnings growth right just mm-hmm. by reading a credit rating or going through notes on uh, 
something like value picker then that gives you an idea theek hai so this idea is worth spending time on and actually most of the times these companies will also meet your filters on tijori finance and screener right so uh, one of the filters that i like to use a lot on screener is uh, improving operating margins and uh, falling debt because these two things are indicating that the incremental return on uh, invested capital is going in a po- in a, basically in a, uh, basically in a positive direction fantastic fantastic i think you recently also made a video on the screeners uh, type of screening and how, right. how you do it right so right. viewers can also back watch that hey, just to simplify the thing i think if, if, all, if all the if all the viewers are watching this so why is roi ic an important metric which i particularly use so i don't uh, basically calculate that as per se but suppose uh, if you set up a shop today and if you invested 100 rupees in the shop and you're making 20 rupees on top of it so one of the biggest problems in business is that you get additional 20 rupees by the end of the year right, right. because then that becomes uh, like 120 rupees of capital 100 rupees initially deployed and 20 rupees extra right now suppose if you're able to make higher returns than 20% on that incremental capital now suppose if someone uh, ask you to set up one more shop but over there instead of making 20% return on invested capital you will make 30% return on invested capital so basically you have 20 rupees laga ke now and on that 20 rupees you will make 30% return, return on capital employed so there are different ways of doing this one of the ways is to just sell more expensive products in your shop where where basically your, where basically your margin is higher and one of the second ways of improving your roc is to reduce is, is to basically reduce the capital employed suppose 100 rupees ka capital employed tha now you paid off your entire debt now the capital employed falls right so these two metrics that i'm particularly talk talking about for screener these give you an idea that where is the puck going right and that gives you a good filtration criteria if someone wants to understand the thought process behind it great 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 sir and coming to the next part of my question is like how do you decide the allocation in a particular company because as you say the allocation is khas kafi se tough hai so like uh, uh, the most problem i struggle also with in my own portfolio is that i don't know how how much to allocate to a particular company like how do you decide that is it on conviction of your particular uh, if a conviction into a particular stock or some other parameters that you check i think see a uh, allocation question actually should be a broader question of asset allocation first but i'll just stick mm-hmm. to equity allocation so uh, just in terms of equity allocation so uh, see again there are different objectives different sizes of capital now suppose if someone comes into the market with a very small capital right then and if he is serious about equity investing that he wants to do, he wants to invest he wants to invest basically directly into the equity if he is really serious about it then one of the problems that actually typically he will face is that suppose he has a very diversified uh, equity portfolio and suppose if the capital size is small then your returns will never be disproportionate right actually what i generally suggest to people before coming into direct stock investing is that first thing that you must do is to actually invest in yourself and to build multiple streams of income mm-hmm. because otherwise it just ends up becoming a game of uh, basically a bucket that is leaking right because your expenses are also there and whatever jitna bhi pani dalo it is uh, bucket already has holes so again that ends up distorting the process so first thing is first have a certain size of capital before you come to direct investing if you do not have that particular certain size size of capital then then basically uh, first thing is to uh, basically upskill yourself. upskill yourself and stick to that process of investing in yourself you need to increase your own cash flows first before you uh, be, 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 before basically you come to the angle of passive income now if you come to direct stock investing and basically equity investing so there are three methods of particular allocation one particular method of allo- allocation is to look for a concentrated portfolio right so in a concentrated portfolio just to give you an example suppose if you have five stocks and uh, what what are the pros of a concentrated portfolio bahut zyada tracking nahi karte because you're just tracking five businesses and if two or three of them do really well then your returns get taken care of but at the same time what are the cons of concentrated investing is that you have to be on your toes right if it means to be on your toes absolutely on your toes because if something goes wrong right your margin of safety on a portfolio level is very low because you're just there in in, in five stocks right it's like uh, betting everything on five virat kohlis and and three and three of the virat kohlis 
basically duck pay bol doge so that that is something that you do not want but there are pros and cons of every approach second second approach is to have a very very diversified portfolio suppose a friend of mine he has 1.5% allocation or 2% allocation across 65 to 70 ideas hmm whenever i meet him he is like yaar portfolio theek kar de i'm like kya theek karu isme yeah, because there are so many ideas i'm just lost for time i ca- i cannot tra- track these numbers of uh, companies so i just like so this is my personal suggestion to him like i've actually suggested this to him multiple times i'm like just completely sell it all and just start from a blank slate just to basically get rid of that tension kyunki main satya stock nahi dekh sakta ki which one to sell or basically which one to hold off so that that, that is something i cannot do so that is one of the pitfalls of a very diversified approach that uh, the number gets too much that you are just not able to track or you tra- or you track but you are never able to get to the depth of the idea right is just upar upar se ki this theme is working to is theme mein dal gaya that team is working us theme mein dal gaya so so that is one approach and pro like what are the pros of this approach so again uh, i was initially very uh, against a widely diversified portfolio but one of the pros for the approach is suppose if someone has less time in the markets and he has already done this all hard work for 4 5 years so what he can simply do is to basically uh, just if he goes in a widely diversified portfolio and he avoids all the bottom of the barrel ideas right all the bad ideas and if he just basically sticks to average above average and excellent ideas even then the returns that he'll end up generating are somewhere close to 1 1 2 3% alpha over the markets right so that is also one of the pros of that of that approach now the finally the third approach is a mildly diversified and a mildly concentrated portfolio where you have 15 to 20 stocks and uh, like your highest allocation ideas are somewhere close to uh, 7 to 8% at cost and uh, so that is the approach i put particularly personally follow because see i want basically because we are into small and mid cap investing there will be blow ups as well so you want to be a little diversified to avoid a portfolio level blow up and at the same time you want to be concentrated enough to make the disproportionate returns that come in a that basically come from small and mid caps so that is the idea behind having a portfolio of 15 to 20 stocks now i'm again just saying that i can be totally wrong but this is something that particularly works for me so the, the maximum allocation idea is somewhere close to 8 to uh, like somewhere close to 8 to 9% at cost right and you just let your and you just let your winners run as well until or unless they get absurd valuations once that happens you also cut down on your winners got it got it got it so i think you explained it pretty well in uh, bucketing them all uh, all the three approaches uh, bucketing all the approaches into three buckets thank you right now the question that i had sir how to decide your exit policy or in each company uh, like art of selling type when to exit correct correct, correct. when to exit See, there are like six, seven triggers for exiting. One of the key triggers for exiting is uh, like I tend to put the companies on a time stop loss, right? Mm. Now, stop loss is good for traders, but uh, stop loss can also be used in investing. So there are two types of stop losses. Suppose if a stock falls by thirty, thirty-five percent without any news, right? So that that is when you actually start searching for a reason. It is falling on heavy volumes. then it particularly most of the time is means something wrong is happening with the business then you try to find out what is happening so so that is one way to actually think about whether uh, so basically actually to think about whether an exit should be made or not second way is that uh, like in terms of uh, using the stop loss is suppose if a company is promising a lot but in terms of numbers it is not delivering right mm. so i just try to put that company on a stop loss because suppose if in 8 to 10 quarters of you holding a company almost 2 to 3 years of you holding a company a business is not able to deliver then what what is the type of return that you will make at the end of the day agar 5 saal mein jaake double hua then then again your uh, return is 14 15% which is what nifty gives so my objective is to beat nifty because nifty itself gives 14 15% compounded annual growth rate comfortably right otherwise there is no point in doing uh, like individual stock investing so this so this is one way of selling second way of selling is that your thesis has gone bust right so uh, you look at the portfolio you look at your thesis and the thesis is bent broken and beyond belief right so this is what mr sanjay bhattacharya says that the four b's bent broken and beyond belief right so if you thought that something will happen in the company right if you had a broader thesis and if you are, and if if you are if you are done bottoms up work as well and you had your reasons for buying 
so just invert your reasons for buying then those re then you'll also get the reasons for selling right so that is what is the idea of selling stocks so uh, i've also so see i've also sold stocks uh, when uh, like stock the company was doing well but my thesis for buying because i'm looking for like fast earnings growth that didn't hold true any longer so then i had to end up selling so the so getting to know the why behind the business or getting to know the why you're buying this stock actually makes it easy for you to sell a stock as well so that is the second one the companies where your thesis has gone bend broken and beyond uh, belief now uh, third key uh, reason for basically selling stocks i think uh, that is on a personal level whenever you need cash now so, some so, like some type of urgent need of funds has come so then again you can uh, basically sell the stocks so these are broadly three four key the three four key reasons for uh, selling companies right and one of the biggest reasons for selling a company which happens more so in my case is that because i go through a lot of ideas i end up finding something that is better so recently only i think i did this case study on a business by name of piramid so again not a stock recommendation to anyone over here so uh, so i did the case study on piramid and i i thought ki iska jo valuation hai it will start looking interesting below 47 48000 crore market cap because at that point of time i'll be paying 0.8 or 0.85 times uh, for the wholesale book and and i'll be basically buying the pharma business which is actually epic business at 13 14 times ev to ebitda right which seems to be cheaply valued when compared to the peers right so that was the entire thesis now at that point of time uh, like in the portfolio i had almost 14 15 companies and one of the companies i thought ki isme earnings growth will be there for next 1 to 2 years but beyond 2 years i don't have growth visibility on the or basically on the ter terminal growth aspect matlab beyond 2 3 years is company mein kya ho sakta hai because i thought that was a sunset industry then i simply made the switch from that company to piramal enterprises where i think growth can be strong for next 4 to 5 years so opportunity cost which is a concept from economics is actually a choice uh, which also comes into play while exiting companies but this one doesn't come so naturally you have to really think hard about it if you have a port like so i particularly do this i have a core portfolio of stocks then there is a satellite portfolio of few stocks and then there is a substitute bench which is there in like football as well and suppose on 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 the substitute bench i'm able to find a solution which can actually score a goal as compared to the players who are playing uh, like on the field then i simply make that switch so this is the entire concept of opportunity cost so these are four broad reasons for uh, selling a company great 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 so i think the main major majority focus in all these of uh, the the top or three or five reasons of selling a stock is that no why are so in the first hand you are owning the stock hence you will know why you are selling the stock right and another another thing you mentioned was opportunity cost uh, like if the if the players in my substitute uh, are will play better than the people in my team then we will just sub substitute them due to the opportunity cost right that's right and that's right thing. another question that i have was has was do you invest in us stocks so and you uh, another thing you mentioned on twitter was that you have a dummy portfolio in the us can we elaborate on that also uh, currently i am not investing directly in us because there are a lot of transactional costs which come into mm. play mm. so i am maintaining a maintaining a dummy portfolio for the uh, like uh, actually not just us stocks actually stocks which are listed in sweden as well so just maintaining a dummy portfolio right now so there are companies like evolution gaming over there there are companies like taskus in that portfolio there are companies like farme in the portfolio there's also uh, there's also a company like alphabet in the portfolio so it's a portfolio of five to six stocks basically and just to give you an idea uh evolution gaming reported its results last week it grew its ebitda by 115% a number of new use number of new users jumped by more than 45% and company trades at a 2% dividend yield and if such a company was listed in india i don't know what we'll call that company uh, like fast compounder consistent compounder i don't even know the term the, what we'll give to the company right uh, similarly taskus today it reported the results it grew its top line by 60% uh ebitda margins actually expanded to 24.3% and their guide going into the next year is like 50% growth and on fy23 analyzed basis it trades at a pe multiple of 15 times right so i actually find more deep value in markets abroad 
as compared to markets in india right now because it's a in india actually you have to go to b2b businesses to find some real hidden value types whereas in b2c businesses everyone knows there is an asian paints there there is a uh, like all the b2c business like relaxo is there bata is there or something like um, uh, like uh, something like fidlite is there so i think in india if you have to find those disproportionate winners you have to go into b2b business and i'm not saying b2c won't create wealth create wealth b2c will also create massive wealth so just saying that but in terms of companies listed abroad because there has been a tech crash over there so you finding such value right there is a company like farme over there if you look at alphabet right despite the base it grows at 25 30% right and you get it at pe multiple of 20 25 times which i think is very very uh, under appreciated like if you look at the indian equities because in indian equities you're getting 10 12% growers at some uh, 80 90 100 time multiples no one can justify them actually even if you do a discounted cash uh, if you even if you do a discounted cash flow or even if you do a reverse dcf but yes the price keeps on increasing so uh, you can basically fit in the numbers with the narrative over there but it just seems to be a uh, no brainer to invest abroad at the given moment great 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 sir another question that i had is that how did you develop a sector competence in pharma and chemical sector and how are you keep keeping expanding that like you are also are getting into nbfc financials and more and more and more and more and sectors you are expanding your circle of competence like how do you do that actually i started out as a financial analyst i used to uh, okay. analyze financials like <laughs> okay okay so uh, uh, pharma and chemical came after that okay. uh so started out as a analyst we used to track financials then i so it's actually very easy it's it's not some rocket science so you just have to do simple things right so one of the things that you can do uh, if you do not want to analyze financials or pharma bhi nahi analyze karna so you just go to industries where there are only one or two players now suppose mm-hmm. amines industry like amines in yeah hle glass ko gmm powder uh, something like uh, if you just go and basically the analyze the business the nsdl cds right cdsl nsdl that that's a good example actually something like balkrishna industries like right? one company so it's easier to analyze these small sectors within sectors and then you actually start appreciating the difference between why does it trade at a higher or a different valuation as compared to the entire sector so that that is what i particularly liked i think there was also this company which used to make fishing nets and stuff garware technical fibers mm. only listed company in technical textile srf also has a technical textile business but this is very very differentiated so to read that one business ab kya hi rocket science hai right you can re- read one business and you're understanding one industry itself there's also this company ccl products which is listed in 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 that coffee segment right in basically in the coffee processing segment again you analyze the value chain you see that the plantation uh, like coffee plantation owners do not make a lot of money but the coffee processors make the most money in the entire value chain then you just read that business then you get an idea about the coffee process then you get an idea about the coffee processors then you see ki india mein kitne listed hai you find ccl products is listed then there is a tata coffee uh, so you just actually by reading these concentrated industries you can build your circle of competency better and the best thing is that these companies already have return ratios which a normal company do not have hmm right so this was how i started even in chemicals i basically started with this chemicals is not a homogeneous sector it's very very heterogeneous fluorine may you will find three players separate matter phenol may you will find one player ek hi dum separate matter then in atbs and uh, basically uh, in in atbs which which was uh, which is what vinith organics manufactures you will find one player again an entirely different matter right so in surfactants you will find two players rt surfactant galaxy surfactant surfactants again two players within the chemical industry again a different sub sector so also for g uh, yeah. again a different sub sector for shark right so again entirely different sub sector so uh, so again the, what ends up happening is i suppose again an example of bromine right mm. so bromine you find again a different sub- right so again you find a different sub sector altogether so that is how you sort of start building your competency ki acha suppose if i talk about bromine then what is special about neogen capitals right suppose if i talk about navin fluorine what is special about navin fluorine and you you have to be able to explain the differences between navin fluorine gujarat fluoro chemicals and srf and all the new companies which are trying to enter fluorine that mm-hmm. will that is what will define your edge of circle of competence right 
so that is what defines your edge of competence similarly for deepak knight right you need to know your edge of competency ki what are the pros and cons of being a bulk chemical uh, player right or or being an integrated chemical company right so that is what circle of competence is ki you can tell ki acha ye competitor hai iske andar that competitor is doing that and you can sort of have an idea okay the company that we are looking at it is differentiated from the competitor because of this now again boils down to the idea of microeconomics that is looking within the industries looking uh, within the competitors just to differentiate between the two that what is the real differences right so this is again the idea of de- developing a circle of competence i think circle of competence is a term which has been see uh but it it has actually been used as a uh, so a couple of my senior friends as well it has been used so i actually called them out on this one as well that it has been used uh, as a term to avoid doing work sometimes i mean like at least kaam karke dekhte to hai kya pata nahi samajh aaye we'll discard the thing kaam to karke dekh lete hain right so a friend of mine actually uh, he's he wasn't interested in this uh, pharma sector but still he he studied one company and he's sitting on a three bagger Right. in the time when all the api companies are supporting and that's an api company uh, and basically a company that makes all the capsules and stuff he's sitting on a two three bagger right that's also another different industry in the pharma sector the capsules industry right right so again it's all based on your work the starting valuations matter the type of company you're getting into the uh, like which uh, basically matters and in spite of doing all this you will still go wrong sometimes right you love your hits like suppose uh, in building material industry now i read st- apl apollo i think i put up that was the first ever report i wrote in 2017 18 ke aas pass i think i published that using my old handle on twitter i don't know if that handle is still alive or not i think so i retweeted that from Ish- uh, like uh, the uh, the ishmoy handle on twitter so that, that is that might be there in 2020 2021 sometime sometime around back then so that was the first company that i typically wrote a report on and put it out on twitter and stuff so that one company again you read about the steel tube sector there are hardly like uh, three four serious competitors one is high tech pipes one is surya roshni and then is the apl apollo steel tubes right so you just compare the balance sheets of all the three companies you get an idea okay this one is most leveraged the second one has so many businesses i don't know i don't think so if if we'll uh, if we'll just focus on steel tubes then you find apl apollo which is completely focused on steel tubes right has the highest capacity has the highest growth in volumes right so again that gives you an idea about uh, ki how to go about developing your circle of competency because at the end circle of competency ka kuch core concept nahi hai suppose in in ninth class if you love a subject right it always happens if you love a subject you will go beyond your way to even get basically more information correct. about that particular subject correct correct so advantage of looking at concentrated industries is if you love a sector because it is already concentrated you'll go out of your way and you'll know what four or five competitors are right and that is where your circle of competence develops at the end hai to kuch nahi na aap competitiveness hi dekh rahe ho right what all players are doing and what makes this player differentiated that is the entire idea behind sort of uh, like studying different sectors yes you can go wrong now sometimes now just to give you an example within the pharma sector there are so many sub sectors so there are companies which are exporting to us which are into the production of generics right a generics itself has become a become like a commodity right no matter if even if you are the king in that sector right or no matter if you are michael schumacher in that sector but if the road is full of potholes you will get your tire puncture hmm. right you can't do anything okay similarly if you are investing in uh, companies which are doing patented uh, contract research and manufacturing services even if you are a On, on a basically a normal driver you will still end up beating michael schumacher who is driving on a road which is full of potholes yet you are driving on a road which is extremely smooth but you and even if you have a 60 70 km per hour uh, uh, car which basically drives at that speed right so that is the second type then third type is companies which is which are manufacturing generic apis now i realize this that if formulator companies are facing pricing pressure at the end piche walon pe bhi to aayega apis and intermediates and the other right uh, things so the thing is to actually you learn through experiences as well basically you are able to think that okay your uh, thesis went wrong on this so what did i learn then that is where the true learning happens okay mm-hmm. now i have to stick to companies which have high margins so if you if you look at the results of the companies this time there are companies like syngine 
EBITDA margins or operating margins expanded. DVS type company margin actually expand okay is very so there there was also one of supplies right so there is company like Suvin Pharma again expansion in margins again there is a company like Tiramal Pharma no did no disturbance in margins and another uh, like finally we come to domestic pharma companies right which are not FMCG per se because uh, these are very very highly regulated companies FMCG companies are not that much regulated so it will be wrong to call them FMCG companies but yes economics is a bit like FMCG companies if you look at the Uh, return per capital employed or Sun Pharma domestic business. If someone gives me a choice, I'll just blindly buy that business because they make some absurd ROC in the in the in the domestic pharma business. If you look at something like JB Chemicals, right? All these companies will do well because at the end your microeconomics are right. Again, coming down to the concept of microeconomics because I'm able to make that money because what counts is distribution, uh, manufacturing or putting up high. Like uh, like assets which have lower asset turns that do not count. What counts is the asset turns, and what really counts is the distribution and the productivity of the medical representatives. So finally, you are able to uh, classify a, a pharma complex looking pharma sector into four to five sub segments, and you can just see that where the variance of outcomes are there. Now this is a very interesting concept even for you, Jay. Right? So there will be situations in your life where you will be uh, given to shoot a fish in a barrel. Versus mm-hmm. shooting fish in a pond. So, given a choice, which one will you take? Shooting fish in a barrel or shooting fish in a pond? In a barrel, right? Because something you Correct. can just right, you can just sort of. Uh, There is no barrier fish. of the pond. Uh, right now, wherever you so in your life choices as well, where I, so I particularly think of it this way that competition is for dumb and stupid, right? And even higher variance of outcome is again is not something for me. If you have to shoot in a pond to basically uh, catch a fish, then ag- again it's it's the variance of outcome is too much. मतलब बहुत सारी चीजें हो सकती. Right, whereas endless. Right. Now, if you're shooting fish in a barrel, then probability of getting the thing right is more and more in your favor. So you make these sub segmentations in the pharma sector itself just to get this that you have to shoot fish in a barrel. And how do you do that? How the circle of competence develops? By knowing the edge of that competency, so my edge of competency, what you can also understand over a period of time is that avoid formulators, avoid generic APIs, stick to innovators and domestic pharma. Then that is how the edge of competency develops, and it also develops because of failures, right? You see, suppose if if you are expanding, right, and suppose if suppose if you are walking straight on a road, and you if you just keep walking, and then you take a step and then you fall into water, right? So then, that water becomes a boundary for you. That this is where the land ends. Mm. This is the idea of circle of competence. That this is where the competence ends, right? So this is so beyond this, I cannot go. Mm. So this is the entire idea of circle of competence. I am I'm glad actually you asked that question because I thought that this analogy has always been in my mind, but I just wanted to put it into words. Great. I think the one example that you gave was also same because. I like the in my ninth standard syllabus. I like AI, artificial intelligence subject very much. So I like it so much that I've also taken two three courses on Udemy to learn it more and more and more and right. more and more. So basically, that's also a thing that if you like a particular thing better, you will just first you will go into the subject profit. You will uh, study its competitors. You will know why this company has edge over the other company, and then you will again look for another sub sector in that whole sector. Then you will end up studying the whole sector. Uh, two sub sector, fantastic. Actually, fantastic. this I used to do a lot in political science classes. So we were we were studying about the Cold War, and I actually went and just read two three books on Cold War, and I actually used to come in the class and I used like so. I I think book me any like oh this also should be added. Right, so we I think I had a very 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 good time in school because teachers were very very uh, passionate. I think I am very th- thankful to uh, like all the teachers, especially in eleventh and twelfth class. Great, great, great. My next question is around the uh, in your uh, S Y C videos at the end you do valuation analysis by bull base and uh, bull base and bear scenarios, and I think that I like very very much in your uh, videos that you give probabilities than a particular outcome. Like ये होगा के वजह से ये भी होगा ये भी हो सकता है और ये भी हो सकता है. So how right. do you do that for a particular company? Like how do you decide uh, bear scenario, bear scenario, a bull scenario? See the best scenario is that even in a bear scenario, you end up making money. That 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 is the best scenario because your margin of safety is the highest. 
but that might not be the best scenario because uh, like in terms that maybe the market is discounting too much or something bad could happen over there right so again that you have to think about ki what is the market thinking as well second way to actually think about it is that uh, actually because you can only make money in the bull scenario probably it's overpriced right no matter how good your competency is no matter how well you have understood at the end you do not have to fool yourself right so if you can only make money in a bull or the bullish scenarios right then probably it's overpriced then i think uh, this is why i think base case bull case bear case that gives you a lot of objectivity yes i understand this business yes i like this business but whether it makes sense at these valuations right then then that is a call you have to take fantastic 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 sir another question that i is like how how is your daily routine like like how how much time in each day you spend studying or researching about companies and how is the whole uh, day like so see the entire day is like suppose every week if you are covering one business so what we end up doing is that uh, i try to uh, break so actually there are two or three things which i am uh, like usually do in a day so uh, so there is a friend of mine who i work with on different stock ideas and stuff so we usually have a conversation throughout the day he's working on some idea i'm working on some idea and he has very good connections and well he's connected to uh, like to a different uh, like actually different good investors he's also con- like he's also connected to a lot of these uh, like he's able to uh, get, get hang of a lot of pr- promoters as well right mm. so that so i talk to a, I, i talk a lot to him right so the, so the one part of the one part of the day is spent in that basically is looking for new ideas what is he saying what is happening second part of the day that is typically spent is in reading right so effort is to just finish one book in 10 to 15 days at earlier it used to be one book in 7 days but i have ext- expanded that to 10 to 15 days just to absorb the book better right so currently i think i'm just it's in front of me only i'm just finishing this book by the name of alchemy right and this was given to me by arjun badola so uh, he is also there on twitter so uh, like he uh, like he came to he came to delhi almost 3 4 weeks ago so this is one of the books which i picked up last week to study it's a fascinating book right now this book i think 10 15 days is that i need to spend 20 days because the ideas are so in depth right uh, that i need to actually think about those ideas for a while so there so one part of the day goes in that then there there is also part of the day that suppose if i have to analyze a particular business now suppose we are going to analyze alliance industries right so i just mm-hmm. give you a live example now i'm reading a book right uh, on on basically uh, the business alliance industries 170 180 pages ka book hai jaldi ho hi jayega and uh, secondly i'm reading a lot of initiating coverage reports on alliance industries and i'm actually trying to go through the accounting as well because it's so damn complex right it takes a lot of time but i'm breaking down the entire process into uh, small steps history kya business ki kon kon se different sub segments hai what is the competitive ad- advantage what is the right to win in different sub segments what are the margins in different sub uh, sub segments because what you are at the end you're doing is nothing but you're actually painting a picture by drawing small small dots dots by completing the small small fragments this is what a company analysis is if you watch a deepak nitrate analysis problem with deepak nitrate analysis was that was the most toughest uh, like like that was the toughest analysis i've done on the channel because the biggest challenge was that there were no uh, printed transcripts of the con con oh okay so you have to watch the whole video or perhaps i had to video. listen to 17 uh-huh. 16 17 con calls dating back from 2011 2012 that was one of the most challenging videos to make because 80 90 minute ka ek con call i'm just listening to him reciting the numbers and that that took a lot of time but i think i was better off it as well because you have to challenge your side like yourself sometimes but again that is how your like how your knowledge works because see uh, this is how you also become more, like more and more uh, aware about different businesses that you are trying to find out the history theek hai you are trying to place the business within a broader sector theek hai deepak night right is in chemical sector but what is the business strategy that, that that is a deeper question now you get to an answer at the business strategy is three folds one is to substitute imports right second part of the business strategy is to be an integrated co- company right so for suppose if basic intermediate ka business 
is serving as raw materials for the finance speciality business right and uh, finally is that the phenol division what's the purpose of starting a phenol plant again two folds it's an integrated business you have to remember so an integrated business will never ever just go into downstream speciality, speciality. meaning of integration is that half will remain bulk chemicals so 60 to 65 percent of that business will remain in bulk chemicals whereas 30 to 40 percent will go in downstream specialities and even downstream specialities are particularly not speciality chemicals they they, they might have a 200 base so like two percent or three percent more ebitda margin than the phenol business but you get an idea about the basically you get a broader structure of the business strategy and final part of the business strategy is actually because you're replacing a lot of imports so I think anti-dumping duty is also a part of business strategy. So I think that that is a that is something that you start understanding when you read these businesses more and more. Now suppose uh, now this is a deeper question that has to be answered. Now you will find businesses where there is no business strategy. Then you will get to know. ठीक है ये बंदा मेहनत कर रहे but ना कोई direction नहीं है. Outcome uh, defined नहीं है. Outcome आ गया तो luck है because it's the world of business. But actually there is no direction. You need people with direction in life. You yourself need to be a person who has a direction in life beyond a period of time. Because see, initially, what everyone is nothing but potential. And how, how do you hone that potential by having a direction? It's like you're sharpening your pencil in that particular focus or by, by particular direction, right? Because if you're not able to sharpen the pencil, then your pencil will remain blunt throughout a period of time. And then what ends up happening is that your potential gets destroyed, and then you end up becoming bitter in life. That so is not turn the potential you. energy into the kinetic energy. Right, that is the thing. Like potential has to be converted into reality at the end of the day, and that can only be done through understanding the business strategy. Be here, what is business? It's a living entity. If you think about it, right? Uh, now suppose, uh, like, if I talk about SOIC, so at all the times, another person is sitting with me. That is a figment of my imagination, but who is actually a real objective person in the imagination. That is SOIC, right? So SOIC is an equal partner. right we all are working for soic this is why if you look at a balance sheet then equity is a is a is a part of the liability side of the equation because this is what the business owes to the shareholders right so just to just to simplify things more is that i think business direction or a person direction both of them a lot of things in common you will also find this out in life i am actually finding this out as i grow as well I, uh, like i know like abhi bhi i'm a I'm very ignorant person but uh, i think a lot of my peers who have had a very set direction even those who are senior than me uh, they they have been doing really well in life some people are still trying to find themselves out uh, so let's see how it works out for them but even if i look at people in mid 30s or mid 40s those who have a very set direction of how to go about things and how to uh, like achieve something with a particular defined strategy i've seen them doing better uh, than the others and now this is the aspect of broader question of business and investing because who runs business j people right correct so if people do not have a set strategy in mind how will a business have a set strategy so business yeah. is nothing but the broader idea of the p of the guy who's who's running the show right so i think having partnering with such people who know their shit ki what we are doing is actually the way to proceed by giving them higher allocations by seeing what they are doing right so that is how it goes i think the example that you gave of the books also correlates correlates with my because uh, in i i used to read i i i used to read no books uh, uh, before 2020 and after that i used goes to got addicted to books like i used to finish a book in 7 days like now now uh, the latest frequency is around 7 to 10 days uh, i finish each book and currently i'm reading the accidental empires this was book was recommended by pratush mithil sir i think also a fantastic book about uh, how the silicon valley was formed uh, the journeys of bill gates steve jobs etc etc awesome that, i think the the uh, the one of the books that you recommended atomic habits i think that also is example right that if you do if you keep reading that book for let's say 30 minutes like If you keep that habit to read, let's say two pages a day, then the habits keep forming, 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 and then after a period of time, you can finish that book in ten days, fifteen days, kind of thing. Right, right. Awesome, awesome. I think uh, just keep uh, like keep at it and keep exploring your potential, like whatever you're interested in. Fantastic, fantastic, sir.
No, I think uh, my questions are uh, done. I think we have some questions from the Twitter side, the, the questions from Twitter audience. Uh, right. I will ask. I will ask the, those questions to you. Uh, the first question is from the learner at the rate Patel Invest. He asks, as bull market progresses and economy recovers, CapEx is back on track. Every sector and every business looks great from the future perspective. In these scenarios, uh, how uh, he or uh, you makes make sure that he uh, you won't go down the quality curve. See, there are multiple ways to play industry cycles. Now, just to give you an example, uh, I wouldn't ever buy a steel company because that is not. what my framework is someone is buying i'll say go buy right because i am responsible for myself and my investing philosophy but i will buy a refractory company because it's proxy on the steel sector it's proxy and it actually even in a downturn it was growing its volumes at 3 4% times right correct right. so that is a much see it's also a, so how i usually converse with my friends so he will call it it's also non tezi idea as compared to a steel steel business right but it's enough tezi to make you money but it's also enough tezi not to give you sleepless nights that is how i put it right so i'll actually play these things through proxies uh, which is better and uh, i think proxy investing works very very well uh, there are multiple examples uh, like just to give you an idea right uh, why actually someone has to uh, again buy a for- formulation company and just go for companies which are doing contract manufacturing or with companies which are man- making the intermediates or again better than that nahi samajhna samajhna hi nahi hai just go for amines right as simple as that you can just uh, get ki amines are used in bulk drugs it's it's one of the most important chemicals without it bulk drugs cannot be made as simple as that char panch chemical ke name padne hai isme kuch competency banani nahi hai right similarly a company like rajasthan global buyers right now tire sector down cycle up cycle nahi pata kaun sa acha karega right so just go by rajasthan global buyers not not they like not at these valuations again that's a independent question but just to give you an idea that how pro- proxy investing works that proxy can give you a very very uh, they can give you much more peaceful return as well correct 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 sir uh, another question from uh, adrat akshat investor uh, akshat sir is that uh how how did he start his investing journey and what is his investing frameworks uh, uh how is his investing framework i think we, the first two questions are answered by you uh, the third question is how bad and good experiences have shaped it how do you construct your portfolio and what are the triggers for buying adding and selling see i'll just uh like so bad good triggers for buying adding selling and portfolio construction i think those those were three questions so i'll just start with the first one bad and good experience so i'll just give you some examples right now first i'll give you the example of a bad experience right now uh, suppose i bought a wholesale nbfc right i've been there done all types of things right and i know the cycle has turned i end up losing 40% of my capital right but my allocation was in control which made me survive now the important point is because allocation was in control i survived right so these two conditions fulfill the third condition that i end up learning from the thing right because if my allocation was disproportionate and uh, basically i couldn't survive so i wouldn't have been able to learn from the experience so bad experience was i learned from it ki see there are some businesses see the worst mistake that any investor will do including me including probably you you will face it after like for like 3 4 years uh is that when you extrapolate cyclical uptick in cash flows as structural uptick in cash flows that mm. is the worst mistake mistake you can do because no, i have done that mistake already like in a bit of the companies uh, right. that i that i thought was a structural trend but later i realized that it was a cyclical trend uh, I, i think it is it also recently happened in sms pharma the ibuprofen hit that they got and it got uh, uh, reduced back then I think I think I also I also wrote on your thread on Twitter that be a little cautious of ibuprofen and stuff. Correct, 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 correct. Right. Uh, no, I, I didn't invest in SMS Pharma. That's another game because I uh, the, I read the, I read that note that ibuprofen should you should be cautious about ibuprofen. I made uh, a mistake in Mangalam Organics. I thought that uh, the the they were going in the structural trend, but later they they were they were doing in the commodity place only. So that uh, good. Uh, I learned a lot, a lot, a lot from that in that investment. 
like how to spot the structural trend and how to differentiate uh, cyclical from them and that was a like, great learning experience I, uh, that, that's the uh, awesome thing because see if your allocations are in control and you survive you end up learning because experience is something uh, that you get when you were looking for something else types right so that is one of the bad experience ki i think sabhi investors se galti hogi cyclical uptake in cash flows being structural right and then you start then you end up being wagged by the market now second good experience just to give you an idea there are some sectors inherently where it's easier to make money if you just go with the leader now we made almost a 10 bagger in apl apollo right yeah. now that gives you an idea ki it's not just apl apollo then you look around you find are are kya kar raha tha main abhi tak you look at building material industry you look at wire cable everything is growing right oh polycap wo ke yeah it's growing 15 20% volumes right say second third tier business in building material is growing volumes right if you look at ke i i never knew 6 months ago that this is more than a 100 bagger i never knew right and they have grown at 15% for last two decades 15% last two decades simple business kya banate tar banate hai right so the good experience is that when you uh, come across these patterns now you find that in building material leader and even sometimes the tier 2 player who is growing volumes fast and who is then then sort of trying to do that branding and stuff like just to give you an example astral Mm. growing volumes at a great pace then spend on branding then make it a uh, then make it a semi commodity types that you are a, a that you are a pseudo brand similarly prince pipes trying to do the same similarly apl apollo trying to do the same they uh, i think they spent 50 crores on uh, the brand campaign with amitabh bachan apollo pipes also trying to do the same they i think uh, recently did a brand campaign with tiger shroff right then you look at polycap polycap ka ad kitna dikhta hai right then you look at kei industries uh, sponsoring all over ipl right then these are then you just try, try finding acha to industry ka hi pattern mm. right because unorganized player won't do branding right you, you, you won't find a like a basically a unorganized player sort of sponsoring virat kohli right then this is how national brands are made if your volumes grow and you expand your production faster than the others and if your distribution base is already in place then these are good experiences in investing that you are actually able to recognize this pattern playing within multiple sub sectors so that that is one of the good key learnings because see building material mein kya hai a company like asian paints 24000 crore ka sale hai i think uh, 23 24000 crore ka yet it still grows volumes at 8 10% that just shows you the potential of the industry in spite of such a big base company growing at 8 10% correct 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 sir I think there were two more questions in this. One was on uh, allocation exit, and I think allocation I discussed already between the interview only. Yeah, and, yeah. and the third one was uh, how do you decide the buy and sell and add and hold decisions? I think sell one I already answered in the interview. I'll just correct, take correct, the buy. Exit strategy one. The hold one is very tricky for me when the company goes to obnoxious valuations, right? Hmm. So it's always worked out very very differently for me. so i'll give you a good example then again i'll give you a bad example because i'm full of good and bad examples whenever i think i'm getting good at it then there is a bad example to make me to, to make me basically go down to the earth right so a uh, good example is whenever i've uh, like i've held a fluorine company at a let's face it obnoxious valuation right and uh, company will grow earnings i i think see again this is just a probabilistic Thing I think it will grow earnings at thirty thirty five percent for next four to five years. That's the type of capex guide you're looking at. That's the type of confirmed contracts you're looking at. So I'm very comfortable holding it, but I'm tracking it like a hawk because whenever the valuations are great. So you might have seen so basically Spider Man you, you might have seen yeah. Spider Man with great valuation comes great responsibility to track because one quarter or two or three quarters of bad earnings. this toast right because agar multiple aada ho gaya the stock price is down 50% and agar right. earning earnings 20% kar gayi like gir gayi and stock is yeah your multiple is uh, p is, is like p of the e is so down by 50% and your e is also down by 20% you get a 60 70% straight cut right so i think tracking these like a hawk is important like i haven't been able to get them uh, like exactly right while selling but i've still avoided major blow ups right in holding very high pe companies uh, where the valuation corrected and uh, then again i used to think in the hindsight ki uh, 
maybe I should have booked profits because at a particular point of time I was 130, 140 percent up on a position, right? But again, that is what your bad experiences teach you. If you survived, if you were within allocations, you learn. So holding me, I will hold a company which has high valuations but has exponential earnings growth. I might not buy more, right? But secondly, if I see that some deterioration in earnings is happening or some two, three years of earnings visibility is going away, because in company ko high valuation tabhi milta hai, visibility hoti hai. Kyunki jo analyst Excel sheet mein dal rahe na, if, at, if that analyst is able to project the earnings three, four years out, he will give it high valuations. And once the visibility goes away, what happens? Analyst kya karega? Downward revision in estimates. And then you get all hells break loose. Typically, a quarter mil jate hai sari judge karne ke, right? So I think uh, this is something which I have learned. Uh, and I think this is something which is also evolving as I go along because a lot of people are able to use technicals to make their whole decision as well. That suppose if a highly valued stock, uh, if it falls below the, if it basically breaks the 200 day daily moving average with very high volumes, then that just indicates that a smart seller is getting out. Now there could be tons of reasons for a seller for getting out, but this is where your stack free of investing helps you. You're able to have connects. You're able to have network. You can able to understand who is selling. You're able to understand what is the reason for selling. Kabhi kabhi toh the reason for selling. Fund band ho gaya ji. Like so one of the re recent companies that we own. So I followed up with the IRK. Like what happened? There were massive volumes. They just told us ki jo ek AIF tha. So unka abhi, uh, like tenure has been completed. So they had to sell. Then mm -hmm. a technical analyst will think, oh, like volume gone, khatam ho gaya, story khatam, right? But then you know that what's, what's, the, what's the reality behind it, right? So there are again, uh, superior information gathering, uh, being a fanatic about information gathering. So that helps you in whole decisions. Finally coming to buy decisions. Buying decisions, yeah, it's like, uh, suppose if I understand the thing, there are three things typically. Valuation is good business. I can at least see myself holding it three, four years. Shayad, sir, hold karu, na karu. But I can see myself at least holding it for three, four years. I just go and buy. Fantastic, fantastic, sir. I think, uh, do, do you yourself look at technicals, sir? Uh, some, like, like uh, very few indicators. Like, uh, so I just use this uh, 200 uh, exponential moving average, uh, then two, 200 DMA as well. Then price volume action is something that I look at. Then I look at percentage, uh, like percentage of delivery and uh, basically uh, kitna, kitna delivery over stock mein. These are three, four I look at. I do not look at technical chart patterns. Utna abhi itna nahi ho sakta mujhse, right? Then uh, these are th two, three simple patterns. Iske so because see, suppose uh, now you're holding a deeply valued stock, right? Now it is trading below 50 day daily moving average, 200 day daily moving average. So that so those moving averages just give you an indication. It is still not loved by the markets, right? And once it sort of goes above that, then you get an idea that yes, maybe the idea is finding some lockdown, right? Mm. And typically because we are such an inefficient market, what ends up happening is that uh, typically earnings come like one or two quarters out, by then the price has moved 50%, right? So you're at the end of the day, your analysis of business and triggers has to be really, really good. Because suppose today I hold, uh, let me give you an idea today I hold some of finance, like some financials, one of the hospitals, just trade at valuations, which is like bankruptcy. I love you. Right. And actually make a right. There are N numbers of reasons for, for that happening. I understand those, those reasons. I also understand when those reasons will go away. Right. But now a guy, my, so a guy who's into momentum investing and stuff, he'll enter at a 60, 70% IFS, right. Mm. Because I'm just sitting on it. I understand the reason for buying okay holding and right? i'm able to build a higher allocation and right? i don't want to take one two percent allocations in 60 ideas and then call myself a momentum investor see again nothing against momentum guys they have a different philosophy i totally respect them all ev everyone has a different philosophy learn from everyone so this uh like these type of indicators maybe i picked up from them and maybe i respect them for that right so you have to be respectful to each and everyone in this thing because there are hundreds of ways to nirvana if someone else is going through a different way, I won't call him a fool. That will just show me that I'm a fool because I'm not willing to learn from him. Right? If I can learn even 10% of his philosophy and I can apply it to my own framework and I'm able to mold it, right? that is 
where the real learning takes place on the framework level. Fantastic, fantastic, sir. Uh, the next question is from Rajat Banerjee, sir. Please ask him how how to identify sectoral tailwinds. What are the parameters one should investigate to find good companies within that sector? What are the methods does he follow to identify proxy players within the sector? Right. I think uh, Rajat, thank you for the question. So Rajat is one of our SOIC tribe members. He's always very appreciative. He watches all our videos and uh, hats off to you because uh, it's it's your it's actually it's the support of viewers which actually uh, makes you do videos as well. Because otherwise, con har apne bed cake business analyze karke Correct. right raat raat par bed cake so like kal paso wo banayega video right. Actually, it's, it's your support and love which helps us to do this. Coming to your question, sectoral tailwinds. Now, typically, uh, what actually I've done in the past as well. So I just took out a week or two. I read DRHPs of companies. So this is one exercise which all of you can do. Actually, a cheap exercise. Hai. Ab sirf do hafte nikal lo, right? Fourteen days, and read fourteen different DRHPs of companies from different sectors which are going to IPO. Ignore the company. Company to nii dekhni hume. Just as an idea, ka dekhni hai, dekh bilo. But fourteen different sectors. Uh, 14 DRHPs and 14 different industry growth rates. You'll get an idea. Of. So that is one way to do it. कि आपको 15-20 industry का you write down the growth rates. ये 15 अगर CPAS industry है, so CPAS is growing the fastest. अगर ERND industry है, तो ERND is growing the fastest within the IT sector. Why? Right? And that gives you an idea. Now then, suppose if I have uh, narrowed down on the ERND industry within the IT sector, and I find that it is the fastest grow- fastest growing. I find a Tata Lexi. I find a LTTS. I find a KPIT. I find a CN. Now with CN, the problem is I look at it. It is linked to the business of airlines, right? It is business to aero engineering. Then I find that okay, so both cyclical. Then I kick it out. Now KPIT, some people love it. I have no arguments against them, but I think it is linked too much to be uh, too much to be auto. Yeah, R and D and stuff will increase, no doubt. But still, I think that my risk value framework me a little more. Then I narrow down to uh, LTTS and Tata Lexi, and then I again actually look at some of the reports. I find that the largest ER and D player in the country is HCL Technologies, which has a very large ER and D business. Then you go and read HCL Technologies, and then you get very very interested in HCL Technologies because it has a, it is trades at a cheaper valuation, business is uh, growing fast, and mix is changing rapidly. Right? Then you go just go and read HCL Technologies. So. Multiple ways of doing it, right? I, I, thoda sa element of serendipity bhi hota hai because you're reading information, then you're able to connect dots to, to like two or three. Similarly, agar aisi ab chemical industry me karo, so you find ki fir wo key starting material wale, intermediate wale, API wale, fir formulation wale, then CDMO wale, right? Ah, uh, chemical chemical me bhi there are companies doing custom synthesis manufacturing in agrochemicals, right? Then you just get down, then you sit and then you study, and actually me. You are able to get an idea of all the proxies as well. A uh, pro- proxies can then so just to give you another example of uh, there is also one more thing known as excipient, which is used to manufacture, uh, which is used to cause reactions and stuff, which is used to give, which is used to give it a shape, right? Which is used to bind it to a particular form. So, a excipient ka dekho recently a company the company IPO by the name of Sigachi Industries, right? Then you read about the business, you like the business, but you do not buy because valuations are not. But you have read the business now, right? You have done your homework now. Now exam, chai, date, sal baad ho, but me prepared, right? right? That is the pur- purpose of starting SOIC as well. Ye channel jitna apne liye utne mere liye bhi hai, because I am doing all my homeworks right now. I have done my homework on Privy, I have done my homework on Prince, I have done my homework on uh, APL Apollo, uh, K, jo bhi aur PPLs hain, or in depth kam kar liye. I have, I have, I have, I have basically done my homework on Galaxy Surface Tent. I have done my homework on my Udemy quarters. I've done my homework on a plethora of companies. Me ko kya karna hai ki jab us time pe kuch valuation hai, I'll just look at my video again. I'll just go through the risk. That's it. Abhi baal ke the code also you said right? The luck when well, luck is when the opportunity meets the prepared mind. Ha ab hai kya? Best thing is ki ab SOIC channel ki ab main apne liye bhi homework kar liya. Aapke liye bhi homework ho gaya. You can sort of if you watch Bal Krishna Industries video, you just need to read. I think two or three hours more, or like one or two hours more, you're done with the business. You know everything about the business inside out, right? Now, if it comes to a favorable valuation range, which I hope it does this time, right? You just 
your homework is done then you just go and buy now not a recommendation for you to buy or oh, sell correct, it to correct, anyone correct. right but uh, just because homework is done i can do those things right now half of the people or half of the audience because of a uh, like so again india mein thoda abhi bhi lack of financial literacy hai ki fundamental investing shayad se abhi bhi log nahi samajh pate but actually uh, fundamental investing isn't that ki you discuss one idea and you just go and buy fundamental investing a lot of time is spent in preparation you and you discuss 200 ideas but at the end you own only 50 but you discuss 200 because your pool is done mera substitute bench ready hai agar substitute bench mein 20 bhi baithe hain 10 bhi baithe if i find someone who is more capable of uh, of a player who is injured during the match i mean just replace it but it won't be possible for those people who are not able to do this right so i think soic ka purpose ye hai to bridge that gap so this is the reason we put out videos otherwise कोई मतलब एक्चुअली शौक थोड़ी ना कि वीडियोस भी बना जो ब्लॉग भी लिख सकते हैं कुछ भी लाइक पॉडकास्ट भी कर सकते हैं राइट सो आई थिंक जस्ट टू आंसर रजत क्वेश्चन सिंपली रीड सेक्टर्स लाइक ये डीआरएचपी वाला एक्सरसाइज करो चौदह पंद्रह दिन के लिए ऐसा करो आपको सारी कंपनीज मिल जाएंगी एंड काफी बारी कंपनीज तो डीआरएचपी में पीयर्स और कंपेटिटर्स और वैल्यू चेन दे देती सो दैट इज अ गुड एक्सरसाइज दैट यू कैन डू रीड क्रेडिट रेटिंग जिन लाइक ऑफ कंपनीज विद इन द सेम इंडस्ट्री एक्सी स्क्रीनर या मनी कंट्रोल पे जाके वॉट यू कैन डू इज दैट इफ यू जस्ट क्लिक एट केमिकल सेक्टर तो केमिकल कंपनीज आ जाएंगी सपोज तिजोरी फाइनेंस पे इफ यू वॉन्ट सब सेगमेंटेशन कंपनी मेकिंग दिस कंपनी मैनुफैक्चरिंग दैट तो वो कंपनीज आ जाएंगी राइट सो देर आर मल्टीपल वेज टू डू इट नाउ अब तो इन्फॉर्मेशन का वैसे भी डर नहीं है Uh, another question is from uh, Saiku. Uh, he says, uh, "Do you have any plans to launch uh, advisory in the future?" Uh, I have sort of. Uh, I won't give any guidance. Let me say that, <laughs> right? So, अभी कोई ऐसा ऐसा सच advisory advisory structure में सबसे बड़ा problem क्या है? So, nothing against advisors. Some of them are really fantastic investors. But problem is, suppose if I bought an advisory in twenty nineteen. राइट अब 2019 वाला 2022 तक सेम स्टॉक होल्ड कर रहा है और जो 2019 में आया था उसके रिटर्न्स तो ड्रास्टिकली डिफरेंट है अब जो 2022 में आया ही इज बाइंग एट अ हायर प्राइस ही इज बाइंग एट अ हायर प्राइस पर वो 2019 वाले ही डजंट वांट टू सेल द स्टॉक्स राइट सो इदर यू बी एब्सोल्युटली रैशनल राइट कि ठीक है वो 2019 वाले रिटर्न्स अलग थे बट अब ये स्टॉक अच्छा नहीं करने वाला राइट बिकॉज़ वैल्यूएशन हैज बीन पुल्ड इनटू इट सो इदर यू बी एब्सोल्युटली रैशनल और सेकंड you close your advisory for 3 years once the initial subscription because it is unfair for the people who are coming in second and third year to buy the same set of stocks at higher valuations so this is where i find the structure to be a little uh, not so good so i have seen advisories who give buy hold and sell recommendation so what they'll do if a stock goes to a higher valuation they'll just put that stock on a hold list now the problem is ki if i if i buy that advisory today up 70% of ideas are on the hold list i can only deploy 30% of my cash right so what's even sort of the point of basically going in the advisory mode and secondly another problem with advisory now i've seen this with investors happening all across and an advisory gives an exit recommendation but you fall in love with the stock you're not able to exit right then you again start blaming the advisor yaar marwa diya ye kya kar diya like i lost money ye sab ho sab now see at the end of the day it's like it's a product which has to be timed with valuations when the market environment is conducive jab koi ye nahi puchega na yaar advisory nahi khol rahe aajkal tab ja ke advisory khol that is the best time you can open an advisory because everything is a full toss ek do saal baad thi it's such a game uh, like investing is such a good game actually when there is a full toss which is bold to you and when you hit it out of the park the result is seen two years out are chhakka mara tha do saal pehle uh-huh. right because valuations are so cheap now a problem kya hoti hai now this is opposite if someone bowls you a yorker right when valuations are very expensive and you end up buying the advisory and you invest in the advisory right uh, if kisi if someone bowls a yorker and you get bowled wo bhi pata lagega dates all baad re aaye to bowl matlab 18 saal um, like 18 18 18 mahine se like returns nahi hai some of the stocks have went negative so i think this is the problem with the structure of advisory so nothing against advisories or pmss but ye problem na aayegi sabko aayegi I think any advisor or any PMS manager who's, who's listening to this will be going through this problem. कि जो सस्ते valuation में आगे थे investor, they are sitting on some obnoxious returns. जो last six seven months में आए, they are sitting. Some of them are also sitting on losses, right? So either you educate the clients well, 
कि जो आज के टाइम में आ रहे हैं क्लाइंट्स चार पांच साल मत एक्सपेक्ट करो कि बहुत अनाप शनाप रिटर्न आएगा जो पुराने वाले क्लाइंट्स हैं दे स्टिक टुगेदर दे रिटर्न्स विल कीप कंटिन्यू बट आई थिंक कम्युनिकेशन इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इन द वर्ल्ड ऑफ फाइनेंस एंड इन्वेस्टिंग आई एम ऑल्सो सॉर्ट ऑफ लाइक गिविंग दिस टू यू एज अ सजेशन कि जब कुछ खराब होता है तो कम्युनिकेटेड ट्रांसपेरेंटली राइट बिकॉज डैट इज वॉट पीपल एंड ऑफ रिस्पेक्टिंग आउट ऑफ हंड्रेड पीपल टू विल अब्यूज पर नाइनटी एट विल एक्चुअली देयर रिस्पेक्ट फॉर यू विल एंड अपनी कम्युनिकेशन इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट Right, so this is there, but advisory may maybe we go and open it when market is a little topsy turvy, or we open it in structure such a structure that three years may only once we open for subscription. So that that is the uh, second thought first. This is what I am thinking. Actually, whosoever is watching this as well, you can also give me your uh, feedback in the comment section. Fantastic, fantastic, sir. Another question is from Radhan uh, Shivratri, sir. He is asking uh, how to derive a fair value of a QSR company. See, I think uh, QSR companies का generally ना valuation थोड़ा higher रहता है. तो just wait for three weeks. Actually, I'm just going to Bangalore to visit the Popeye store. Just just a one day trip. So let me do the entire thing, number crunching. Then I'll give and then I'll give you a perspective on international valuations of these businesses. Because internationally these businesses have created a lot of wealth. So you need to ca- capture one concept, जैसे KFC का chicken में है. डोमिनोज का पिज्जा में सिमिलरली इंटरनेशनली देर इज अ ब्रांड बाय दिन विंग स्टॉक इफ समन इज वॉचिंग दिस फ्रॉम यू एस एम प्रिटी श्योर दे माइट हैड चिकन विंग्स फ्रॉम विंग स्टॉक सिमिलरली देर इज अ ब्रांड ऑफ चिपोटले देर इज अ ब्रांड बाय दिन चिपोटले वो मेक दिस ऑल दिस मेक्सिकन ग्रिल और बेसिकली समथिंग लाइक समथिंग लाइक बरीटोज एंड दोज आर वेरी हेल्थी एज वेल सो दैट कॉन्सेप्ट वॉज ऑल्सो हिट एंड स्टॉक वॉज अ मल्टी बैक एंड ऑल दी स्टेट एट अ हायर वैल्यूएशन एज कम्पेयर टू द नॉर्मल मार्केट सो आई थिंक बेटर आइडिया मैं आपको तभी दे पाऊंगा जब मैं उन कंपनीज को इंडेप स्टडी करके एक पी टू पी वैल्यूएशन प्लेटर आपके सामने ला पाऊंगा कि अच्छा वाई आर वाई आर दीज कंपनीज गेटिंग हायर वैल्यूएशन मे बी बिकॉज द कैश फ्लो इज वेरी डिपेंसिव बिकॉज फॉर हंड्रेड एंड सेवन क्वार्टर्स इन रो नाउ डोमिनोज हैज ग्रोन इट सेम स्टोर सेल्स ग्रोथ इंटरनेशनली फॉर थर्टी सेवन क्वार्टर्स इन रो इन यू एस इट हैज ग्रोन इट्स ट्रिपल एस जी लाइक लाइक सेम स्टोर सेल्स ग्रोथ दैट इज मतलब कौन सी कंपनी करती है नौ नौ साल के लिए ग्रो इन रो राइट सो मतलब पढ़ना पड़ेगा अभी ऐसे नहीं बता सकते मैं आपको मेरे को एक्चुअली पूरा सेक्टर देखना पड़ेगा इंटरनेशनली भी क्या मिलता है आई थिंक दिस इज द थी प्रैक्टिस दैट यू लर्न आल्सो फ्रॉम आशीष किला सर राइट यू फर्स्ट टू एनालाइज अ डोमेस्टिक कंपनी यू आल्सो कंपेयर इट विद द पीयर्स इन द फॉरेन कंट्रीज राइट लाइक यू डिड विद इनफोज राइट हां इनफोज एक्चुअली मतलब आई थॉट इट वाज एक्सपेंसिव है बट ही वाज लाइक नो यू डोंट अंडरस्टैंड द पर्सपेक्टिव सो ही ही मेड अ किलिंग ऑन इट एक्चुअली Like he bought at some eight eight hundred nine hundred rupees. He made a killing on it, and as I said, it was a concentrated position types. I massive respect for him because he was able to see what I wasn't able to see in the valuation. Right? So two people, same business, different conclusions. That's the fun. And third conclusion, Pita, I said, I don't know. 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 Uh, another question is from uh, Shekhar sir uh, at the rate learning eleven. He's asking enough of asking him about stocks. I would love to know about his personal life's roadmap. Like besides SOIC, what else would he like to do? Any personal pet projects? How does uh, his life look in the next ten to twelve years from now? I think think ten twelve years ka socha nahi hai, right? Two three years ke goals hote hain zada thar and uh, like it's more or less on a day to day basis. So. Actually, if if I wasn't doing SOIC, uh, I would be a teacher somewhere, or I would be I would have been working in a think tank, right? I would have been writing articles, something that is uh, intellectual only. So, yeah, those side pe zada zada, sir, मतलब बहुत ज़्यादा जाता है अभी तक सोचा नहीं था ये सब करूँगा. And secondly, कुछ ना कुछ फिर भी passive business का source of income तो बना के रखते हैं. Because today we have cricket and football grounds. I'm still thinking that football ground एक और expand करना चाहिए नहीं करना चाहिए because That is again a uh, like so you have the system in place then you just automate the thing right so उतना कोई task नहीं है but I think कहीं ना कहीं सी entrepreneurship और risk taking का तो अंदर एक वो जरूर है कि risk तो लेना है कोई problem नहीं है right risk is part of life probably because of the family background as well I won't say कि that I come from a very very humble background or something I come from an okay background right मतलब so we do get family support But at the end of the day, suppose if you start your first venture, like Punjabi family, me, what problem? Eh? Now, if you start your first venture, and if that venture goes down the drain, 
your your father will keep come coming and uh, telling you like not to you to your to your mother dekha main kya main, main kya si <laughs> right maine bola tha aisa ho jayega right so uh, it's actually uh, different perspectives right so to theek hai okay background hai isme koi problem nahi hai but still uh, to get that capital initially you need trust and if something not works out khuda na khasta right so uh, that that can always happen so then again you get judged right within your house you keep keep getting judged so it's a different type of challenge it's not that ki challenge nahi hai but different type ka challenge hai to karta to kuch entrepreneurship mein karta and uh, secondly um, like i would have played even more football mm. right that's the truth great great do, do you still play football uh... i still play football but less nowadays because i have this persistent problem of runner's knee so uh, mm. actually during college time I was playing in the morning and uh, like रात को I used to go play on a turf as well so because of excesses uh, like excessive usage of knee so knee जो knee cap knee cartilage है यहाँ पे problem होगी jumpers knee करके problem है it's a very normal problem to have but if I play twice or thrice a week now if I suppose if I play three times a week I'll get a swollen knee I won't be able to walk right so uh, that is one of the issues that I have so I I can't play more than once or twice a week now. Oh. uh another question uh, from lakshman jagar sir is that in contingent liabilities how to know the strong possibility of any dispute tax issues guarantee issues will uh, uh, issue, will go in company save or not how to analyze this sir? i think see if agar si case ho gaya now there is this company noida toll bridge sir ye company thi ab wahan pe supreme court matlab jahan pe wo toll lete the to toll ke against hi laga de ki toll hi nahi le sakte ab yahan se traffic bahut tag raha hai now if that kind of situation comes up in contingent liabilities stay away because two rules of investing are being broken that is loss of capital and second rule is do not forget rule number 1 ki do not lose capital right so that is one thing second thing is uh, now in contingent liabilities you know that the promoter has a group company which is into a shitty business right which is into a bad business and promoter still keeps expand uh, like still keeps expanding corporate guarantees to that company you know it's an accident waiting to happen which is what professor bakshi also says that if it's an accident waiting to happen probably you don't want to be there right something like z enterprises right because um, like sl group matlab i never thought ki z mein aisa hoga but if you look at contingent liabilities and stuff it's just this like off the charts right then you end up losing control of company with teen saal ka uncertainty it's not fun to sit it's not fun to sit in such a company then see it's always based on what the company is doing and what the situation is now i suppose aaj main koi company pad leta hu and ja ke wo kisi uh, like so actually i'll just give you an example i used to own gujarat chlorochemicals right i bought it at some 950 uh, 9 1000 rupees ke beech mein but i ended up selling it at some 1900 2000 rupees because contingent liabilities jumped a lot because they're extending loans to their wind infrastructure company right and see One stock my diversification stock chal gaya meko koi problem nahi stock goes to 4 5000 right but that is where my it doesn't meet my cream ki koi problem ho sakti hai wo keh rahe hai fi 23 tak hum hata denge wo sab nahi hataya to right kya ho jayega because wo abhi they are saying hata denge but itne saalon se to nahi hataya theek hai 80 90% gain okay could have made 160% type gain theek hai okay part of regrets too but theek hai framework nahi kaam kar raha but over a period of time if i keep repeating the process I'll get favorable outcomes, right? Now you asked me for reasons for selling. This was an opposite reason for selling because it broke my accounting filters. Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, I think that was the last question from the Twitter uh, Twitter audience. Uh, right. Now, uh, thank thank you thank you for being on the show. So like this was a two hour in depth in depth session. Like massive massive learnings from this session. Thank you for doing yeah. this. Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me. Keep doing the hard work. and actually i was surprised to know that you are in ninth me ko laga 11th me to hoge but still great to know that you are in ninth keep doing the hard work uh, keep studying hard and always remember you are nothing but potential and just uh, have your habits right thank you so much for inviting thank you thank you thank you thank you bye